You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Johnson. After Buzz TV. After Buzz TV. From the AfterBuzz Studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menounos and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is AfterBuzz TV's Helix After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's Helix After Show. We will be away for too long. I'm so excited to talk about this is the Helix After Show here on After Buzz TV. We're talking about the season one finale, episode 113, Dans l'ombre. Oh, man. My French is terrible. uh, Stephen Lemieux, is is your French any better? How would you pronounce it? Dans l'ombre. Dans l'ombre. Okay, sweet. Dans Uh, l'ombre. We'll have Catherine Lemieux. Go ahead and tweet us how bad our pronunciation how bad our was. French well, all is. of them. Neil speaks right. French. Montreal. Yeah, it's true. The, the the Canada faction can help us out with Who this. Who are you? Um, I'm Matt Lieberman, if you didn't already know. Joining me, the fantastic panel. Been here all season long. Stephen Lemieux here. Good to actually be on the ta- be at the at the big boy table yeah. today. It's nice to have you here. Uh, Liz Rishmaui's hey here. Guys. Zach Wilson's here. I was still on my way to San Jose. Yeah, he's he, in his he peaceful was. place. Um, Roya Tahiri on the ones and twos engineering for Hello. us today. Thank you for joining us. Yay. Um, so, so much to talk about. This huge finale. Obviously, we had our great interview with Steven Maeda, the wonderful showrunner. If you Felix. haven't checked it out. Check Go it out. check it out. Yeah, check that out and then come back because it's it's just chock full of information. Showrunner and executive producer. Yes. We'll give you some... We'll give you some like little highlights from that later in the podcast though. right and uh you know we got a lot of great stuff from him um some tidbits about the second season obviously we're all thrilled that there's going to be a season two of helix Woo-woo. um Woo-woo. we got some great stuff coming up on the show we have a song parody this week we haven't done it in a long time uh <laughs> but zach put together this amazing parody of ironically the arctic monkeys uh <laughs> do i want to know no ironic it was a totally conscious totally choice and conscious matt you did you helped me out with uh, with the back half i wrote a little bit um, i just i saw i saw the text it's like oh arctic Monkeys. is like how did we not think of how that, we that not is think brilliant of that? that's so smart uh real quick before we start though i just want to give a shout out to sony pictures television robin harney over at sony pictures television who sent me this amazing uh where the hell is my monkey shirt i'd asked for it on the show <laughs> i said i would wear it every day and i've worn it several times not on the show yet i had to get it on the show before we ended i'm going to make a shirt that says where the hell is my where the hell is my, my monkey's, monkey's t-shirt, t-shirt. Yeah. and i'll wear that on oh wait make that on the t- finale make, make that it on- our <laughs> and we'll all yeah Walk around in it, I guess. Do it on Teespring. If if more than 10 people buy it, then it's a shirt. Yeah, hashtag we love free stuff. Yes, exactly. (laughs) I can't even want a shirt that says, because they would never second guess a dead monkey in Puerto Rico. That was a great line of yours. (laughs) All right. The Stephen Maeda interview. So uh, let's just start right off at the top. Uh, When we, I mean, obviously we saw this for the first time last week. We got to watch it again today. Um, The white screen comes up. And then it's day 235. What? Oh, amazing. What? And we had to pause it because I nearly yeah, flew no. off into space. No, Matt had to get up and pace around a bit. And all you hear is, what? And like, I, it, is just, I, it was amazing. There were a bunch of moments in this in the finale where, because we were all watching together the yeah. first time, yeah. we had to stop and go back because one of us was shouting of, of, with excitement. Not even just Matt. Yeah. Matt yeah. might even yeah. more I, often. I shouted some things. Yeah, some <laughs> incredibly <laughs> dirty things. Not necessarily. I think I think Mr. Maeda was very pleased to have to be able to watch us watch it for the first time <laughs> was very fun for him. Because we're we're a very active <laughs> audience, and the fact is, it's a finale filled with twists and turns. Uh, the reveals that we got were huge and have a huge effect on everything that's going to come after this. The show has completely blown up its original concept into something that is so much bigger than we ever hoped it could possibly be. Uh, which is very, very exciting. Let's just jump into it. Alan is beating the snot out of this French douche 
who <laughs> refuses to give him answers about the Ilaria Corporation. He's got a tire iron in one hand and a fist full of fury in the other. And a mind full of questions. Yeah. And I think it's Doing very... what he does best, not getting answers. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's also very interesting the guy only had one silver eye. No, well, it's because he beat it out of him. He beat one oh, of his he contacts off. Of yeah, him. he beat one of his contacts off of his face. Yeah. The worst hypothesis, you could literally beat immortality into somebody. <laughs> <laughs> no. Guys, I actually do want to say that right now before I forget. The Willis hypothesis. Yes. We have confirmation from Maeda off camera. He told us we could say it, though. The Willis hypothesis is the hypothesis that you can turn a human into an immortal. Yeah. And mm -hmm. my huge epiphany throughout the week that I wanted to talk to you guys about. I'm Please just so excited. Do. I got to say. The very first scene of this series is Peter on the run. They catch him and they, he's like, oh, it looks like you need some water. And they give him water. And they say it's progress. I'm thinking that that was progress in the Willis hypothesis because they were testing to see how long Peter could go without water and still be alive. And he went past the date of a human would have died. So technically he is still, at, he's kind yeah. of more towards being For anyone immortal. who maybe doesn't remember, or is, uh, just needs a little clarification. One of the things that Gunner said when we were, when we were talking to him, the immortal that was tied up uh, underneath that, uh, that communication station. Yeah. yeah uh, our, our Viking fellow. Um, he uh, he mentioned that he you know a human can only survive you know two days without water a certain amount of time without food a certain amount of time without rest and he's still alive so you know I really like this theory because it would connect that with the with the top of the series and it makes sense I really really love this idea you know that would be torturous though they take Peter yeah. infect him and then they like hold him off so he doesn't have water to see if he actually became well, immortal without jumping mm. too far ahead I'm gonna throw this out there. What if Hataki let this happen because he had a suspicion that Peter was betraying, was a traitor? I mean, I said it for the past three podcasts that I think Peter knew everything and knew, knew about the Silvers, knew about what Hataki was doing and everything. And that's why I feel like he willfully got himself infected. And then we find out that that's confirmed this episode as well. Well, he doesn't say specifically that he was willfully infected. He said that in getting the virus off the base, he got himself infected and he's not happy about it. It was, I, it sounds more like an accident and less like a choice. Yeah. Like mm. he didn't want it. He, he knew it was happening. I think he, he didn't have a way out of almost if he was volunteer or like not a volunteer, but coerced into it. He had no way. Cause he wasn't supposed to know so much well no what my what my partition of that was or i don't know if i'm using that word correctly sorry it just sounded good at the moment partition. um i feel like he infected himself because you can't leave a base with a vial of virus you can't just yeah. leave a base i feel like he infected someone him did no i feel like he infected himself went somewhere let them take his blood and then went back into the base and hmm. basically was himself the vial, the carrier for the virus to get it outside of the base. That's the only way he could get it out of the base. The whole part confuses me. Like, remember, because we had a hypothesis in the last show when we were doing um, the show with uh, Steven Maeda was that what the hell, where did the dead monkey go? Right. And we think that maybe the dead monkey, you know, they said, because apparently the outbreak doesn't take that long. And There's they said that the news the, feed with the outbreak was only a few days old. The issue is Peter in this episode, uh, admits that he is the person who got the virus off the base he was already infected when that monkey was in play so there's no way that he could have gotten the dead monkey off of the base so where did the monkey go we don't know where, I, well we as don't much know where as i like went. the theory that the monkey was involved I, the, I don't think that they did smuggle the monkey yeah. off the base. i think it was just burned up yeah. disposed of and honestly conveniently I'm incinerated to the left Yep. <laughs> right. Occam's razor, right? It's just like, uh, what is the most obvious thing? And even though they didn't intend for it, the guy getting on the helicopter in the first episode is so convenient that makes the most sense to me is how it got off. Well, the funny mm -hmm. and the fun thing is like, and I think, I think, was it Steve who said this? He said, the fun thing is, is we didn't even realize we don't think about that part. Yeah. That wasn't actually what they were thinking happened, but. You know, the fans, we just watch every little thing and we nitpick everything. So, yeah, sure, that could be a way it got off When the you base. put out, like, really subtle hints in social media, like, don't expect us to not rewatch the episode and try to find every little thing. Yeah. Like, oh, that awkward window had a different thing to it. I don't know. Like, I just wanted to say awkward window. Awkward but, like, window. Any, <laughs> any little thing can be picked up as a clue to something larger. And yeah. here, here's the thing about the virus that got off the base. I did some, I did some like, pausing and translating. The paper that Alan is reading 
at later t- at in the, the end. episode. Yeah, not to, just on topic, but not to jump too far ahead. But Narvik B is off the base. There are vectors. There are there vectors. Are, the, the the headline translates to uh, Narvik, transmissible by black saliva. This disease tra- transforms the human into a predator of humans. Whoa! You read the French? Well, I got a computer. You got to translate, translate for me. but like that is jumping way ahead, and we're gonna talk about that. The what? Pre- when we get into predictions, we'll talk but about. Just, the pre- it, but I, but I the say I bring is, it up now because yeah. what if it's not just Narvik A or Narvik B? What if it's the combination that was that Peter had? That's what I'm saying. Like yeah. he would have had to inject himself. And get it out and get it out. Yeah. That so way. these hmm. these vectors, whoever it is that's at, that's running around in Puerto Rico, are that crazy level of vector king right. status that but, but Peter was. When because that's we... the only way he'd stay alive long enough to get it off the base. What? Because you know how they inject it with one of them and it kills them, and then the other one turns them into vectors. But the vector change isn't as immediate as the kill change. You're talking about Narvik A versus Narvik B. Yeah, because Peter injected himself with both Narvik A and B. We actually, we never got that confirmed. He injected himself with Narvik B. No, he injected himself with both. It was with both? That was confirmed? It was was 70% uh, A, 30% B. Okay. Uh, Well, can we get into that in a bit? Yes. Just because it's a big conversation. I want to get all this base stuff out of the way. Um, We're interrogating the scythe. You know, Julia's laying down the law, slapping him across the face. Give him uh, a give him a four four finger. <laughs> what did the four finger say to the face? Slap, <laughs> not slap, because you need all five fingers. Slap. To, yeah, exactly. Slap. Um. So they're interrogating him, trying to figure out where Jane is. Uh, they figure out that you know, obviously, they must be watching them from somewhere, and the best place is the security office on level G. Who would have um, thought of that? Right? It uh, <laughs> seems very simple to me. If that's like the one security office w- uh, with, you know, only one entrance, that makes a lot of sense. Um, you know, so they're trying to figure out how to get in there. And uh, Alan comes up with this complicated plan to flood the room with gas. And Julia is just like, or we could just go in there with guns and F some shit up. And we all, we all like, know. We all okay. know how flooding with gas really went last time. Right? The Hall of Fame gas? It's like, we can flood it with gas, and you see, like, the ghost of Daniel, like... Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, bro, no it's gas. It's not going to work, man. Yeah. Um, so, you know, they they leave Peter alone with the teenager. <sighs> that sounds... Man. That sounds... You, that can be taken so out of context, so please don't say it that way. <laughs> Pokemon. The teenager. Peter's like, alone with the teenager. I like calling him Scyther more <laughs> um, than the teenager. And uh, we, that's when we get our reveal that Peter has been working for Alaria this whole time and that he's been harboring all this deep resentment for Alan. You know, well, he's always felt second best. We also see that Peter does not have a good relationship with the Scythe because the Scythe likes to intimidate people, likes to antagonize people. He was antagonizing more than intimidating. Was provoking being, him, yeah. Yeah, he was just being a Yeah, he's provoking him. Jerk. But yeah. it kind of, it because Peter is still a human, you see that. You see that difference there because the scythe looks down on Peter. The scythe mm-hmm. there. Yeah, I mean he's he's not. It, we think that he's getting him riled up so that he'll like make a bra- a yeah. bad move and let him out, and then he just lets him out, and we're all sitting there. What? Don't yeah. do it. Well, I think I, I have the biggest reaction. Open his to throat. That. Open his throat. Kill him. I mean. Kill him. It, yeah, kill, kill the, him, kill, kill the him, fuck out of him. <laughs> yeah, that was it's, great censorship. I know it wasn't. Right? It's still obvious that that was a swear. No, I know, but the way he bleeped himself out, that yeah. was great. Um, but it, it was a it was a crazy turn. Yes, I'm so Neil. If you're listening, which I know you are, you hurt me. Yeah, you hurt me. You hurt <laughs> us all. I, I actually tweeted out the other night to Neil. I was like, I I I direct message. I'm like, dude, you better be prepared for like a lot of hashtags like that asshole. Peter, WTF like, Peter. What the F, Neil? What the F, Peter? Like, <laughs> yeah. But I didn't see it. I mean, I. But honestly, I, but I like I, it. I loved it. Yeah. It no, was I did, yeah. a great twist. No, it's great. I just, I mean, because it's like, yay, Peter's back. And oh, look how handsome he is. And yay, he's going to be part of the team. And what the hell? He's just, totally going to mess up this kid. Wait, what? 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 Huh? Huh? But huh? the thing is, like, the way that, that, that Spencer was like egging him on yeah it was all that stuff that he brought up that really just showed like all the reasons why it makes sense Mm -hmm. why it totally works that pete would would be working for a liar this isn't like a turn like he just started doing it he's been doing it probably since way before he worked at arctic biosystems yeah and the reason that peter got mad was because it's all true 
There and you go. And he hates himself. But... I uh, I was thinking, I had a thought and then it went away. So I'm just gonna shut up and. All we'll right. Talk to well, you let's. Eventually. Um. <laughs> so meanwhile, yeah. Meanwhile, on iTunes. Oh. Uh, some people, That's what I was thinking. Clearly. Some people were giving us some ratings and reviews. I had to do it. And I'm going to do it. And you're all going to sit there and you're going to take it for the next two minutes. You're going to like it. I will not stand for this. I will not that stand for raping. you to talk about how fans need will to go you... to iTunes and rate and comment and subscribe and give us five stars. And how it helps us. We don't need to hear about that more, we Matt. We don't want to know. How great it is every time that we see a review. About how we have up to 70 to 80 hours of free content online all the time. And that it's all free. And nobody's getting paid. We do it because we love you guys. Nobody wants to do. know about how amazing AfterBuzz TV is at Seriously. creating content. This is a terrible topic of discussion and how you should go comment. <laughs> And yes. rate five stars. And, we're uh, not going to give shout outs to. We're not going to give shout outs to uh, Rogue9A, uh, who gave us a five star review. Love Helix and listen to the podcast. Matt, Liz, Zach, and Steven do a great job breaking down these episodes and just plain theorizing the show's many mysteries, some of which can be a bit out there. I'm looking at you, Steven. Yeah. But many guests really help provide an inside look at the show as well. Uh, another shout out to DW Spell, a great podcast. I'm we're going not to... an actual shout out to DW Spell. I'm going to really miss this podcast when the finale hits next week. Please renew the show. So glad they did. I need more Matt and Lizzie. The, Yay! The podcast makes the show 10 times better. Thank you both. Uh, you know, even in the off season, folks, rate and review. It helps the whole network. If there are other shows that you love here on After Buzz TV, every review, every rating helps the whole network. So we thank you for your support. You totally read that like Bob Barker. I, I am loved it. Bob Barker. And, please, and save Matt and Lizzie. You and know, remember to get your pets sprayed, spayed or neutered. Get your sprayed. pets sprayed. Re remember I don't to get know. Your what if they're on top of something? You've got to oh, spray God. them. Get off the couch. Get remember the couch. to get your Lieberman spayed and neutered. Yes, you want to do that really quickly. Those things are monsters. Okay. Oh, God. So, meanwhile, Sergio has been wandering through the ice and snow. Uh, all on his own, ever since Taluk told him to lay off his sister. Uh, and Taluk and Anana are looking for him. And, uh, you know, Taluk, like, Taluk is acting like he had zero role in Sergio wandering he's, away into the snow. He's, he's, he made his own decision. No, Whatever happened to him being this special ops guy? He's from Brazil! Yeah, everyone knows that people from Brazil can't do anything in the cold. Okay? The only special ops he couldn't get out alive from was love. <gasps> oh, God. It's like a perfect oh, 80s God. movie. <laughs> but Sergio, trudging through the snow, uh, passes out just outside of Arctic Biosystems, where he's found by Blake, another dun, dun, Silver Eyes who he's been banging. Yep. That's like your favorite word to say. You say that banging like all the, is banging. the best word I, well, to say. Bang, not banging, bang, duh. Right. That yes. He, he didn't even call her back. I apologize. So that he said uh, bang. So does he have a thing for older women, or does he just go for like? <laughs> I'm so curious, like if because remember when we said we we thought that he didn't know about the silver eyes and all this other stuff, like right? Did he know? I don't think he, he knew like, the extent. I think he I was think more he knows kept in the dark. He, yeah, I don't when know. he was getting at that, like, did a contact pop out during and like? Well, what no, the hell? Hey, even like, if they had oh, silver eyes, he may have no idea what that means. He may have no idea that they are immortal. Um, you know, but it's just, it's just, you'd think that would be a thing. I mean, you'd think just... he noticed the razor sharp well, teeth she has from <laughs> filing them yeah, down. Yeah, I, I want to get more into that. Like... Well, you know what? There, this, just for the record, though, just for the record, there yeah. was no. Um, he he obviously wasn't making eye contact that much if he didn't Aww, call them back. Bad so. Zach. Uh, I want well. I just want, I want to get more into that with the teeth thing because we didn't get that. Like, what's the deal? It's the cellular, it's the cellular generation. generation because teeth, Regrowth. teeth and hair yeah. and fingernails are all uh, dead skin cells. Or no, it's t well, hair and nails are. I actually have no idea what Your teeth, teeth are made. Teeth are like of. calcium. You just gave me the worst image of somebody with a nail clipper filing but let, your teeth. But like, <laughs> that's the thing. Like I get like teeth, like hair and nails continue to grow. Yeah, but our teeth but don't teeth continue don't growing. grow. They are the way they are. Well, uh, if anything, they fall out over time, so they would just stay perfectly healthy. Why were they? I think you're. I, I love that. Like that's what I, you have a problem with, and not that. <laughs> hey, they live for. They're living forever. Oh, like, I just well, accept that. Well, no, but like that's the first conceit is that they're living forever. That like, and we get the reasons for it. We get the scientific, like at least what it's done to the body, if not right. the, like the whole of how. Maybe she was just but, a freak. You ever think of that? Maybe Constance was just a freak. Maybe she Constance, just likes to stay freak. sharp. Yeah, maybe she's just like a perfectionist and she likes having a perfectly even smile. I, I think I would so love creepy. to see if it's a side effect that there's there's more to that. Okay. 
I'd be down with that. And like that. when we get the origin story, I think that there might be more to it. I don't think it was a throwaway. Anyway, sure. we're going back into the past. Sergio totally like does some stuff with Blake. Well, he did. No, I mean like by shooting Blake. He, he shot her yeah. in the face <laughs> in more ways than one. Yeah, so they 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 hide, uh, and they they hide they hide guns in their science suits and then they walk up in front of the camera and pull out their guns. Right, it's like the most useless deception ever. <laughs> I love that ever. though. They're like, "All right, we got this." We're really slick. Oh, they're bringing the party to us. And it's just like, it's like, no. This isn't James Bond, like. <laughs> well, here's the thing. I feel like if you haven't used guns a whole lot, when you finally get your hands on them, on some level, you're be, gonna be like, "This is cool, gun." Hey, gee, can I hold my gun to the <laughs> can, side? Can yeah. somebody, <laughs> this looks so cool. Can somebody remind me again, though, why? Um, That's a great Sergio, Alan impersonation. Is, why? Why Sergio is so like dead, like like wants the list? Because he what we find, he is one of those children. Did they actually not from specify? that list, but like in another in another part? Like he is. They didn't as say that out loud, but that is the suspicion. And he's also kind of like he's got the hots for Anana. He knows that this is wrong, and and frankly, it's something he doesn't want to be a part of. Like there's a lot of terrible things that he's done and that he's been privy to that Alaria has done, and he's known about. This to him is unconscionable. Experimenting on children is unconscionable. We don't get into why, but I feel like part of that may be a, sink, a, a sinking suspicion that it may have happened to him as well. Part of us, and I forgot who was the one who said it first. It was either Matt or Steven. But when we were watching all the final finale and um, – Hitake was just like, it's all up in here. I remember every single one of those children. And then, and then half of us were just like, just like I remember you. And we so wanted Sergio we, to be one of the children. We totally wanted Hitake to be like, just as I remember you, exactly. Sergio, my son. But he's not an Inuit. <laughs> you look at him, he's, he's not. clearly from he's South Florida. He's not really Florida. Inuit. Yeah. But... Eh. Even though you know he's like, but their base is everywhere, and we know that. Yeah, I do, I do like the theory that he was an abducted child in a different because I think that it stands to reason that there are some form of Arctic biosystems in different places around right. the yeah, world. It's Tropical easiest. biosystems. We have moderate temple. Oh my god. Temperate biosystems. Yeah. There's like an Easter Island biosystem. Disco sure. biosystems. No, it's just you know you do the worst Disco? stuff at Disco? Arctic biosystems because it is the one place on Earth where there's zero jurisdiction. Yes. Um, other things you get away with in say countries that uh, have you know dictatorship, corrupt dictatorships at the helm, where you can get away with some dirty stuff under the radar. As or long if you're you if them. you're in like the middle of the Sahara, where right. nobody's Sahara. gonna find you. Yeah, in the middle so of Sahara. So now we got Sahara. Taluk and Anana. Yeah, uh, <laughs> tromping through the snow, and they've got a dozen uh, you know snowmobiles uh, following behind them in their wake. They find a stop sign. Yeah, they find the ancient stop sign what left was it by. Called again? Um, remember? I don't remember. I don't the remember. Chinooka -nooka or I no. Don't. <laughs> it was it was uh, on the way to Nunavut. Uh, I don't remember the exact name. The of... Tom Nooka Nooka. No, that's no, now, okay. now you're referencing Animal Crossing. Yes, like... in a very small this pocket. Is, of it's getting all borderline understand. offensive. I did yeah. like I liked I liked their explanation of it though. Is yeah. because when you find it, it reminds you that there are still people around. You're because not, when you're going alone. through. An Arctic wasteland of just it's literally a snow. Yeah. It is a desert. You see something that was obviously created by man. It kind of gives you like, oh, okay, like there was yeah. actually people. Right. Around. It gives it gives some hope. Um, and you know they're they're on their way to the base. I want to talk about this scene though, where they confront Sergio, um, and you know everyone's got their guns out, and finally Julia is able to open up Jane's uh, captivity. You know, pod. Captain Pike, beep beep beep, pod. Um, it's what it looks like. Yeah, it, it does. It does. Yeah. Um, and, you know, he, she's got this old lady makeup on. Old lady makeup. You know, and she's been not asleep. She's been awake in a dark box with uh, n uh, unable to move for 30 well, years. Well, as uh, far as we know, though, because we don't know, like, they did experiments and stuff on her. We don't know that she's never been out of that box. If anything, just they just have her for transport in the Yeah, because she says in a cell. They say 30 years in a cell. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they... I mean, but she thinks it's been, like, a week. She's been so heavily... Drugged. Drugged. She yeah. still thinks Julia's five years old. Well, so at first, they've yeah. Well, yeah, but like that's it's not. I don't think that was like a, a hallucination. That's the point in time she thinks she is. At least that's kind of kind of them to make her at least drug her up so much she doesn't realize how much time's passed. I feel like that would just be torture. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I feel like those boxes are used on 
some of the silver eyes. I wonder. Well, I'm just wondering if like what if she's part silver at this point. Like I know she was built to be human, but like to survive. <laughs> well, not anymore. <laughs> but to but to survive that much, like in that circumstance, like I get that they're they have advanced technology, or whatever that's keeping her alive, and like they're feeding her nutrient stuff. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I don't think she'd be silver because her eyes were like they're blue. They were blue, and also. When, especially with this, you, I feel like there's a cast, like a cast system of this, and the people who are silvers feel they're so much better than anyone else. It's an abomination for a human to be a silver because yeah. humans are so far yeah. below us. Well, Which that's, I, that's the big question: yeah. is like, were they ever human? I think they were, but I think that it's also just like vampires, yeah. where there's the young ones and the old ones, and the old ones are so much more. It's been they've been. Silver been so been long. Right. I want to throw throw a prediction for season two out there real quick. Sure. I feel like they open the door for cryogenically freezing silver. Cryogenically freezing. Yes, cry- cry- cryogenically freezing. I want to cryogenically freeze. By silvers. like maybe there's leaders of the five hundred who are frozen right now, <laughs> and they basically come out of freezing for specific tasks. I just want to give a quick like shout that. out. Give a quick shout out to Helix Animals who is watching us live um, and is enjoying our theories on teeth. Hooray. Um, so thank you, Helix Animals. We are for dentists. Watching live. My tangent wasn't totally. Yes. Uh, <laughs> feel free to tweet us. We got Twitter up and running. So if you yeah. are watching live, feel free to tweet your thoughts. Um, okay. So, you know, as Jane is coming too, she's kind of getting more detailed, becoming more cognizant, and she realizes that Julia is her daughter. This is scene a huge went too long. Moment. You thought the scene I went too I thought the long? scene went too long. I liked it. It was a nice little yeah. bit of, of, a, of a rest. From all the craziness going on. And before and it, we got to more craziness. Right. And it also, you know, kind of put a little pin in the Alan Jules relationship to see that her mom immediately approves. Wait. And it's kind of awkward. That and was funny. the best line. That was my yeah. favorite line, I think, She's in like, this whole He's handsome. He's too. a keeper. Yeah. And we're all like, oh. I used to be married. We were married. I you miss missed the wedding, so mom. Much. You yeah. dick. I'm still laughing. <laughs> well, I mean, we sent you an invite and everything. I sent it to Montana, but apparently it didn't get. Where but it's it was important to. to to bring this up because Alan and Jules do share a kiss before the the entire that base blows up. That was crazy. Yeah, I don't know what to do with that. What do you mean? Like, Root for them. Process it. Well, okay. Granted, <laughs> At least they didn't goose nug it. <laughs> True, but let's let's break this down, right? But it was. <laughs> Goose it neck. was a really nice kiss, and like I like <laughs> those characters together. I think they work together, right. but it felt it felt so curveball. I wish so hard because first of all, we, we just totally missed out when when uh, they they tell uh, Anana and to look that Daniel's dead. We missed the it was awkward window again with them crying. But how amazing would it have been had they kissed and then after finding out she just got knocked up, you just see <laughs> Sarah, Sarah, like, Sarah in the, the awkward window. Just, <laughs> yeah. Well, that's, I mean, I'm sure that's what she's feeling because that's what we yeah. have to deal with as viewers now is, you know, day 235. That's about seven months in the future. So if she keeps the baby, so which we honestly don't know if silvers can be aborted, that's a topic, How she be- topic oh. we are not getting into. And I'm that closing, is so it. Much. closing no. the topic. No. So <laughs> much controversy. Everyone stops talking. Moving on. We don't know about that. But that's the thing. Alan clearly still has feelings for Jules more than he does for Sarah, but she's carrying his baby, potentially his immortal baby. Uh, there's a lot going on here. I feel like but there, it, it couldn't be an immortal baby. Wait, well, well like yes, Hitake, it well, Hitake's why, immortal. And why then, would it be and, an immortal baby? Because she's now a silver and it yeah. is now receiving nutrients from a silver. Okay, I see. Because that's, that's actually, that's the big question. And what I think is going to be a big plot point for Sarah in the second season, if she still has this baby, is whether or not it will be born silver, because when it was conceived, she was still human. When it was conceived, she was still human, but now it is. this is a baby incubating inside of an immortal body. I really hope we don't pick up at like 236, because like I was just calculating on my fingers, like she's at like just sh- like a couple days shy of eight months. Yeah. I need that week, that that 13 days that we get to be crossing over her nine months. Right. It has to be when she's having the baby. Yeah. Sure. Hmm. Um, I, uh... Are you making that your official prediction that it's going to take place in like day 270? Something yes. Like that? What I, that, what I will say that. I will I will count that as my official prediction. I think that we, so we are going to see Sarah give birth in, pro, in, the, in our 13 days. Interesting. I, I think it's interesting to me that I think it was in the last um, – 
the interview with um Mr. Uh, with Steve. Steve. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I thought it was funny because I think Zach was the one who said, I think that Sarah is going to join Alaria. I stand and, by that. And she's going to switch. But then it's interesting how now we see Jules working for Alaria. And I, I just wonder. Which is a huge curveball. I know. I liked her little finger thing. I liked it's her like finger a, thing. I liked her power it's like suit. auto mail, but for your finger. But, you know, <laughs> what? why is she working for them? Was she somehow converted in the seven months that she's been there? Is it that she's, you know, working undercover? She's a double agent. Is she just trying to stay alive? Or Possibly. does she believe in what they're doing now? You know, realizing now she's, you know, met her people. These are her people. Um, All those people were like... I guess, I, I mean, my prediction could have just been attached to the wrong person. Mm -hmm. That, like, I mean, it makes sense that somebody, some one of the two sil new silvers that we get would believe in the mission statement. Sure. Right, we're jump, got we're jumping ahead head. a lot. Um, let me just, before we jump to that, I want to just really quickly go into... Uh, they come up with one thing is the thing that's, again, the one weakness of the uh, scythe, scythe and is his mom. So, of course, when they are um, when they do blow the base up, they get everyone together. They're about to escape the base. They open the door, and I called it before I saw it. I was like, oh, the Scythe's going to be out there. Blows the base. When we saw this scene, we saw it on a screener, and they didn't have all the VFX in. So it was like <laughs> so giant red letters on the screen. Base Explosion. exploding. Yeah. Big explosions. explosions. Big explosions. I loved it. Imagine it was the funniest it. thing ever. And it was also <laughs> to music from Return of the King. <laughs> yes. Like the well, that was the music. next scene. Like the, the scene of the helicopter. Oh, okay, yeah. That's what great. is that noise? So great. <laughs> um, uh -huh. So... Like he threw his, he threw the kid's mother's head. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, right. it's like, that, it's like, and again, Greek Olympics going back to Greek, the hammer throw. With his mom's head. <laughs> right. But then he grabs one of the canisters. We don't know. No, he doesn't if, grab it. Ju Jules, or Jules gives hands it to, it to him. him. She shoves it into his chest yeah. and, then and then just boots drop him. kicks him. Drop kicks him out of the helicopter. We don't know if it was the virus or the cure. Uh, I want to go around the table. What do we think he got? I'm going to say he got the cure. Um, Second. Because that's how Started. Narvik B is now out in the world, if that's really what's happening, because there were no vectors in Puerto Rico when they saw the news, when the Scythe told that them about uh, the outbreak. Well, it I'm takes a couple days to to um, to manifest that way, right? Yeah, right. but but for, from the way that the news was was discussing it, it seemed like it had been going on for a couple. of days. They got days. the cure, and I'll tell you why they got the cure. Is because if he, he got the so. if he got the virus with Sarah Jordan, he would be able to make a cure. So right. he got the cure because now he has the cure, but at the same time he also has Sarah. But they can't make a, they can't make a cure without the virus. So they're kind of it's kind of moving. Well, they they can't if like if the virus evolves or changes, they can't make a cure without the virus is what you're saying. Um uh, the the fact is even if they do have the cure, if Alaria does anything to the architecture of this virus, if it evolves in any way, there's no way that they can do anything about it because, you know, all they have is this cerebral spinal fluid from Jules. Like if if Gross. he got the cure, but that but that as a base for the cure is mm -hmm. so cure all right that I feel like it would be able to attack. They they would have to make it to a point where it could vectorize a silver to vectorize. beat that cure. Oh, maybe I was wrong, guys. Uh, no, they did get the cure, but they kept the Julie Julia had the had the virus. You know why? Because you know how in Laris, that's what I thought we were saying. Yeah, that's what I was saying. I wasn't wrong. Okay. I was just confusing myself in laris in laris they died they didn't turn into vectors but now that they have narvik b as opposed because that was just narvik a so they snicked narvik a out of the base right and now now that they have narvik b now people are turning into vectors because the vectors mm -hmm. the vectors were in the newspaper at 235 days yeah not in laris on day 13 so that means they got that means the two different the canisters one of the canisters had narvik b in it, and that's why there's and so it's now. a new like that's why it's in the news is that it's like just, it's a newer new version. Hap it's happening again. It's but now right. it's vector. Yeah. Well, I, I wonder is it did it say in the translation that this is that was did they know it was the same strain from Puerto Rico? They call it Narvik. They yeah. call it Narvik. The, so the paper does call it Narvik. Whether, Puerto Rico was a was a closed event though. So that probably didn't get out much. Right. Yeah. Um. If it the, the paper did not say Narvik A or Narvik B. No. Narvik. And, and, well, here's the thing that we don't know, right? What we what we know about What's going on in the future in Date 235 is that Alan has told 
all these officials and all these people who didn't believe him about Alaria and about the 500. Uh, so no one believes him about any of that. We don't know whether Narvik was a name leaked by Alaria or by any of their agents positioned all over the world who may be, you know, world leaders or in media outlets or whatever, or if it's from the uh, Allen and the CDC's efforts to try to, uh, to try to cure the thing. But now they're part of some kind of underground resistance, whether it's just the people that we know on the base, however many of them survived, or if they've joined up with some larger group of people. I, so they're leaving signals. There's chalk X's on walls. He's a, he's a downright, he's a European spy. Look at Alan. I feel like he didn't, Still like he, he went back to the CDC yeah. and found that the, the CDC is controlled by the 500. Probably something like that. And it's probably just they're so part. They're, I mean, really, the 500 is slightly like the Illuminati in some respects. They're controlling yeah. a lot of things. That's what they're playing on. Um, but, yeah, so the people who we do know are alive. I mean, we saw Hitaki was still alive at the end, technically, not from the 235 days, but just at the end there. Mm -hmm. And, of course, in our interview with Steve Maeda, he said that Mark Ganime, uh, Kira Zagorski, Billy Campbell – are those all, three are all They're back. all signed on for season two. Did he say anything about it? Yeah. Uh, he said that those three are signed on full-time, um, are signed on full-time, and everybody else right now is at a guest star phase mm -hmm. because they're still not sure what the structure of the season will be. So they're giving themselves the most freedom to have them show up as much or as little as they need for the story. Because yes. they, they might do that House of Cards thing, season two with Sarah Jordan. I, didn't know. <laughs> I haven't seen it. Yet. They, they, not giving you guys any spoilers, okay? Yeah. But no spoilers. Oh. No spoilers. If you, if you guys know, you know. I know what he's talking about. Yeah. I don't think that they're gonna go there. It, it, it was interesting. Um, there was only one thing on Access Granted this mm -hmm. week, and it's Spencer talking to two guys from the board. Hmm. What and does he say? He's just saying, like, the big thing that I took away from it, he says, we are the future, and it, he makes a point that it's, like, it's time, I don't remember the actual quote, it's time to do this in the open. Oh, sick. Like, do you think he, they're going to reveal themselves to I don't, the world? He, it, so, it, so it almost infers that. He's almost inferring that they're going to go more public. Or maybe it's to make more public effort, like, mm -hmm. as, as the Ilari well, Corporation. Maybe that's, that's why they know what Narvik is. And yeah, like, I wouldn't think that... I'm actually surprised that they just have some giant headquarters in Paris that says Ilaria on it. Well, they're a public well, they company. A company. They, they're, they're like a public company, and they that way they can operate out in the, like, hidden in plain sight. Yeah. Well, this here's, all, here's what I'll say about... Well, sorry, what were you going to say? Oh, uh, this also kind of plays into the whole, like, pharmaceutical companies being, like, rate making cures very expensive to serve their own needs. This is like mm -hmm. that to an extreme form. Play God, pay yeah. the price. Yeah. yeah. Um, but what honestly, what I like about this idea that you're bringing up, Zach, of uh, Spencer saying we need to do this out in the open, we are the future, even if that's not what Alaria is doing or is going to do in the second season, it means that there is a division among the 500, presumably among the people who have been immortal for a long, longer amount of time and people who are newer or younger in the group uh, about how to proceed. Which this, which despite the fact that Spencer looks really young, I get the feeling that he's one of the oldest. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he's so been worse. waiting for a very long time to come out into the, the open the video, and rule the planet. Yeah, the video makes it look like these are the heads. Like these are like the top the of board. the, of, yeah, it's it's just two guys. I I presume they're from they're from the board. Mm -hmm. um, it makes it look like they are. These are like the the top like the chairman and the CEOs are like sitting down their private little yeah. conference like without the entire rest of the board. Well, um, a fun tidbit that we learned from Stephen Maeda um, before that we didn't get to say on the air, but I think it's okay to say. So we have that shot where Alan and Peter meet up on the streets of Paris outside of the Alaria building, and uh, Alan gives uh, Peter some instructions. You know, if I don't meet up at the rendezvous, move, push on without me. Originally, um, I believe it was Sergio and Sarah were in that shot and were removed digitally. Um, I thought it was just Sarah. Oh, okay. I think it was just Sarah. Okay. Yeah. Well, then it was, it, was Sarah. it was just Sarah. She was removed digitally, A, because she didn't have any dialogue in the scene, and B, also just to, to give us more speculation as to what may have happened to her. Is she still alive? Um, I think the quote exactly was, 
it felt too much like it was Scooby and the gang back together again. <laughs> Which I mean, I'm all d- I'm down for a Scooby gang. Um, so we see the last scene with, of course, Julia Kiarzagorski. I want to ask, like, what are your predictions on that? Because we do have to wrap up fairly yeah, shortly let's, here. Let's just go into predictions because we got a song to do. I think that. Sh- oh, wait for the sound effect. Oh, guys, don't wait for the sound effect. I yeah. wait for the sound effect. Now, your after buzz where's the TV. Se- where's the seizure inducing lights? Don't worry about it, guys. Okay. Um. So, do you think that she's gone full baddie or what? No. I think I think she's probably uh, you know, she's trying to be smart with these people and I think I mean she was kidnapped and all this other, you know, stuff Stockholm went down. syndrome? I mean, I just no, I think that she she was she's she's very smart. She's intelligent. And I think she's playing to a purpose. I think she's actually just playing along to seem like she's on their side so she can get more information and learn more about what the larger picture is, what they're doing, what are they going to do? to the world basically and I think I mean I just I'm already so crushed by Peter and part of me still wants to believe he's not a hundred percent bad like I don't think he would let anything bad happen to like his brother or right definitely not um you know uh Jules right so I'm I'm gonna go with that and just cross my fingers and hope that I'm right and if I'm not then I'm just gonna tweet at Kira and just be why Zach <laughs> I've been stroking my beard because I'm I'm so like the wheels are all turning upstairs I think I think we've lost Julia to the other side no. because, and not that I don't believe in her character. I believe that next season is good. This is all like yeah, yeah. one after the other. I think next season we're going to see a major shift in what and who we're backing. Mm-hmm. Similar to how we proceeded from the beginning of the season right. to the end. How we felt about how and Sergio at the top versus how we feel about yeah. them now. Alaria may take a twist to where we're almost rooting for Alaria. Because they, what they're doing is trying to prevent the end of our planet because we're yeah. overusing our resources. Like what if it, what if a like a, a super extensive militant group that's trying to fight global warming in a in a sense. Mm-hmm. As a bad example, we're not talking about global warming on the show. I wouldn't say like, I wouldn't say global warming, but the mind the minds of a of a world can be thinned out and then made stronger in certain well, ways. Well, like the way that just not global warming is one part of it, but the like the fact is that we there's too many people on this planet already. Yeah. Do like, expect go seven, 100 years into the future. There's people on this planet. Yeah, go 100 years into the future and that is just exponentially growing and they if these are people who are only looking at the long game because they talk about how the, the the silvers seem to not be able to look in the short term anymore. They only see things in the long term. That's the big long term is the planet is screwed. Right. I, I I agree with you, and I think that that's a very good prediction about how we'll view Alaria in the future. My thoughts <laughs> on Julia, uh. it, here's the thing, right? She's an abomination in the eyes of the 500. How would she wind up on the board? I think that she was brainwashed. I think that once they got her in there, they legitimately... They doped her up and they hooked her up to a screen and made her watch propaganda until she believed in their cause 110%. They intend to use her as a weapon. But you don't put that person in on the board. You put them on the front line somewhere in a lab because that's what she's good at, not the person making decisions. Keep your enemies close and your friends closer. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Keep your friends close and your enemies yeah, closer. I, yeah, sorry. Um, I think that she's, I think she's good, but she's also bad. Because I think it gives it gives Hitaki a character arc to actually try to cater to her side and prove his side is right. Mm-hmm. It also puts her in the middle between the greater good of Ilaria, what they believe is the greater good, and what Hitaki believes in the greater good. Her constant push has been for the truth, and Hitaki did not give her the honest truth enough that when they're separated, Ilaria can literally sit her down and tell her everything that they know, and she'll believe it's the truth because... She'll she get the full picture. Answers. They and still kept her mother captive for 30 years and then killed her. But As I don't think that somebody could purely just be so like, okay, yeah, no, you're the good guys when there's things that but people she's, she really cared but about. I also think that they don't have the cure. That's the thing is she's trying to save everyone by being a part of Ilaria because they don't have the cure. Hmm. There are vectors around. The disease is spreading throughout the world, and they don't have a cure for it. Here's my uh, a quick other question for the for the table before we move on. What side is Peter on? I think he's the same place he ever was. 
I Pe- think he's still a traitor. Peter Peter's the dying decision maker. I think he's gonna de- he's go- his character is going to die when he makes the decision of whether he's good or bad. Oh, you think I, that I he's like that. season two sacrificial lamb? That makes a lot of sense. I think he'll play it bad until it comes to that crucial moment when he realizes that the sh- stuff's not really and worth it. He'll sacrifice himself. He'll do himself bad, for and bad and so bad and bad and bad until he has to do something. Redeeming. Let's do our Twitter handles and then we'll do the song yeah. because yeah. we got to get out of here in the next so five. So Stephen six. Lemieux, where can the people find uh, you? Guys, you can find me on Twitter at Stephen Lemieux. It's like right down here somewhere s-t-e-p-h-e-n-l-e-m-i-e-u-x follow me on twitter and watch the finale of twisted this wednesday i don't know what other shows i'll be doing i this is these are both the finales of my only shows at after buzz tv right now but well i'm sure there will be more soon so keep out your eyes peeled on his twitter for more uh Go lizzie ahead. hi guys you can find me on twitter and instagram at lizzie maui that's at l-i-z-z-y-m-a-w-y I, too, am only doing the show. Uh, this is my season finale, too. But, hey, who knows? Maybe I'll be on some other After Buzz TV show, so you should follow and find out. All right, Zach. Hey, guys. I'm Zach Wilson. Thanks so much for geeking out with us all season. Uh, you can also catch me uh, Well, you can catch me on Twitter and Instagram at that Zach Wilson. And here at After Buzz, I'm still doing Grimm, uh, Archer, Chosen season finale. We're going to have the art director uh, calling in potentially tonight. Cool. On the, fin- uh, the finale of Chosen. And... Um, Resurrection. Resurrection. Thank you. With me. Yeah, with yeah. with the Matt Lieberman. Um, and <laughs> you can uh, you can find me on Twitter at Matt Lieberman. M a t t l i e b e r m a n. You can also find all of my AfterBuzz TV shows, uh, source-fed videos, and sketches on my YouTube channel, YouTube.com/slash Matthew D Lieberman. Uh, new shows coming up in April: Playing House on USA. Uh, Orphan Black for BBC America we're going to do. Uh, got Mad Men coming back later in the month. And, uh, you know, if you love sci-fi shows, Defiance is coming back uh, in June. June. So we're going to be doing that. All right. So we're going to be goofy now, guys. We're going to do the song because we've <laughs> yeah. been requested the Helix, hashtag Helix Musical. Tweet at us. Tweet at Neil. Go follow Neil. Go follow Doreen. Or every, and you know, Spectral Catherine. Helix L. Uh, yeah. for, for working on the Helix musical. That's so cool. Okay, so this is written by Zach and Matt, and Roy is going to go ahead and throw the music in there. Yeah. Is there right, any way you can... And it's yeah, from yeah. the Arctic Monkeys. All right, ready? I'm <laughs> going to do it. And Roy, give, give me a cue if it has cues or anything. I love that it's Arctic Monkeys. That just That's works so well. Here's my monkey. It's a long intro. Though. Yeah. They're going to do that whole thing one more time. Have you got vectors on the mind? Do you ever get that fear that you can't shake and you're in the Arctic, find yourself in a bind? Are you immortal looking for your kind? Have you no idea that you're in deep? We've We've talked talked about about it nearly every single week. How many theories can we make? Cause there's this show I found that makes me think of God somehow And we're saying that they're Greek <laughs> Our interest is piqued Leaking zizz on my settee <laughs> Oh, we want to know Are the vectors off the base? Oh, oh we want to know, know. Alan's still working on the case. Oh, cause, cause we, we don't, don't know, know where Alan went to beat the silver while he tries to find jewels. See, see if she's, she's safe. safe. Helix season two. Ever thought that Pete would be the bad dude? Cause we all now do to the future. Say them both. Now Scythe and the Vector King are in cahoots. Helix Season 2. Is Ataki still alive? Been wondering what he's up to right now and where he's been holed up all these months. Sergio and Danana. Two logs trying to interrupt, they were practically on the cusp of of kissing kissing like a goose. We don't know if you feel the same as we do, but we think that Jordan's baby could be pretty cute. 
Oh, we want to know when next season will be based. We so want to know. Is Jules really so too faced? The fans need to know. The 500 live forever, so will the show last more than 10,000 days. Helix season two. How, How many, many days since I last saw you? 222 Man and crew Roasting on monkeys like a barbecue During We Love You Helix Season 2 How oh, we should we spend know. our days Set to see you go For Season 2 we cannot wait Come on, we all know that next year you'll blow our minds and we'll return so that fans can all have their say. Oh, we want to know. We're addicted to your show. Sad to see you go. Get it up on Netflix pronto. pronto we all want to know. When will season two debut? Thank you all so much. Oh, man, it's been we're crazy. such a blast to do this all season long. You guys are the greatest. That was a fun season, guys. This yeah, was an season. incredible season. It's a coming out on Blu-ray soon. Yeah, yeah thank, thank you, you all. Zach, for writing I'm this excited. Song. And thank you to all the guests that we've had on the show. Seriously, we hope yeah. we can't wait to see you again on yes, the show. Thank you. Uh, thank you to Kat. Thank you to Neil. Thank you to Kira. Uh, Mark. To Mark. To Javi. Javi. Cameron and for Tiffany. making the whole Tiffany. show possible. Thank Cameron. you, Cameron. Yes, Cameron and Steve. You, you were all so wonderful to us. And thank you for all the fans' support. Uh, we will be back next winter with more Helixy goodness. Uh, and yeah, just keep your eyes peeled here on AfterBuzz TV. Tons of great shows coming up this spring and summer. You're all the best. We'll see you next season, right? See you next season. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Hashtag Zizia Lyrics here. Oh, we're no. Next year, next year. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals. Thank you for watching AfterBuzz TV on YouTube. For more of your favorite after shows and interviews, subscribe to our channel here and be sure to share your opinion on the episode in the comment section below here. We'd love to see what you guys are buzzing about. Thanks again. Buzz you later.